The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with the American Association of Colleges for Teacher Education and the American Chemical Society, presents Continental Classroom, a course in modern chemistry conducted by Dr. John F. Baxter of the University of Florida at Gainesville. The following companies and foundations have made this program possible. Lesson number 38, sodium chloride and electrolytes. Today's lesson will center around table salt, the chemical sodium chloride. Salt, craved by animals. So they'll travel miles to find it, prized by the ancients. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath lost his savor, wherewith shall he be salted? Salt, best known of all bird-catching devices to small children. Salt soluble in water and consequently the despair of Coleridge's ancient mariner. Salt, a monument to the curiosity of a woman, Lot's wife. Salt, so plentiful that it inspired such deathless lyrics as, there ain't no sweet man worth the salt of my tears. But away from these illusions, back to the salt mines, we say. We have talked about a reaction between sodium atoms and chlorine atoms to form sodium ions and chloride ions. In this case, though, indicating that the electronegativity of the sodium atom, 0.9, and that of chlorine atom, 3.0, is enough difference that the transfer of an electron from here to here will take place completely to give rise to ions. When we observed that reaction in an earlier lesson, though, we concluded that the best way to write the equation finally was in terms of 2Na and a chlorine molecule, because that's the way chlorine is found, to form 2NaCl and the amount of heat given up for two moles of sodium chloride formed is 196 kilocalories. Now, many teachers would much prefer to put pluses and minuses in here. Many chemists do it this way. To me, the important thing is to know the properties of sodium chloride and then you can vary your ideas about how you would like to symbolize. If you like to put pluses and minuses here, fine. The important thing is to know what it's like and what its properties are. It has a rather high melting point, 808 degrees centigrade. Its boiling point is even higher yet, 1465 centigrade. It comes in little tiny cubes, often perfect cubes, which are clear and colorless, but in small size, commonly look in the gross as though they are white. The crystals are commonly rather brittle. They are also rather easily scratched. At least ordinary coins will scratch them. It's much denser than water, at least twice as dense as water, which accounts for the fact that when you add salt to water, it sinks to the bottom. Now, we've talked about salt as being ionic and have intimated that ions actually exist. Now, just why do we believe that salt is composed of ions? In this lesson, I hope to present some of the lines of evidence. Now, no one of these lines of evidence is in itself necessarily conclusive. But I think the converging lines of evidence will point to the ionic concept as the best single explanation of the observations which have been made about salt. Here is the lattice that we've seen many times, but I think it's worth looking at again because it typifies these ionic compounds such as salt. Now, from the lattice structure, you can't say that it is a salt necessarily. But this does tell us something about the arrangement. Now, let's just see how the planes of atoms or ions, as we believe they really are, come into focus as I rotate it, as I perhaps roll it like this, or maybe even turn it up on edge and rotate it slowly. Notice how they line up in regular arrays from time to time as they pass in rotation. What I would like to do, though, most importantly, is focus attention on a certain part of this structure, and let's look at it this way, and 